I got so excited when I heard we were watching this movie because when the spirit gave me the movie last night to watch the first time, he gave me this one to watch right after it and I knew neither of them and it was during a real breakthrough and I just I just felt so excited because I had that feeling of like it being the same moment and I still had the same invitation and I uh, I guess I felt like I really received it last night and I, I look forward to receiving it even deeper tonight again. So mm -hmm. It was deep gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good follow-up movie. We thought about it the first day, too, yeah. <coughs> okay, well, this is another Undoing Our Self-Concept movie. I think the one we watched yesterday was more they were kind of like thrust together for an intense undoing. And this one's more of a, <coughs> it kind of exposes a fear of death, fear of intimacy, and loosening of control. And um, I believe that the two that have the friction in this maybe had had some interact relationship interaction before so it's not like they've never known of each other or met each other but it's just the dynamics are very strong for undoing so it's it's really good in that way and um, I think it's really good just like the other one with the letting go of control mm -hmm. so what's the name of the movie life or something like it is that right mm -hmm. okay did you see it before? I, I know it, yeah. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Okay, we'll we ready? A, we'll give it a good, to, good, good yeah. to the really what the theme of the movie was, is, you know, to live fully. We can't really live fully while we're holding on to any kind of concept. And she had to see what she was attached to and see it from a different angle. That was beautiful. What was she attached to? Well, before I think she was just attached to being, being a reporter and so forth. We really don't know at the end what she's doing. She's just at a baseball game, <laughs> yeah. So, but she did pass by whatever that was in New York. <coughs> so we talked about that. You, know, you can't judge your advances from your retreats, but. She certainly didn't try to go after her, her dreams of, you know, going to the big city and get a bigger, bigger job and so forth. And in the end, I think that the deeper thing is this being attached to choice or to the world in any way, because it's like that, that whole script is written thing. I was talking, I think I mentioned that in my interview this morning with Ann West, I was talking about that idea of something's meant to happen, there's nothing you can do to stop it from happening, and if something's not meant to happen, and there's nothing you can do to make it happen. And there's a, 
there's a peace in that, there's like a resignation. We talked about it in context of this, her being away on a cruise far, far away and in a forest fire burning down all these, the place where she had done, had worked in a lot of her clients' houses and, but her house didn't burn down, but that was part of us going into the how of quantum forgiveness, of, of just pure, pure acceptance. Like, you know, just saying, well, whatever, whatever will be, will be, and whatever is a happening has to be happening for the higher good. So it was really a releasing all sense of outcomes, you know, about the house and, and so forth. And the house, it burned a lot around her, but it didn't burn her house. So when she got back, there, there was a house. It's like, well, she was in it today interviewing me, so it was serving very well. But it's really letting go of that idea that, that somehow you can control the script or control outcomes. Because forgiveness is that on an inverse relationship, if it was a, like an equation, I always quote that part from the Beyond All Idols section, way back at the back of the course text, which is when you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. So you can't really fixate the mind onto a specific form and know what forgiveness is, and forgiveness is our only function. So, therefore you can see that that's, that's the joy of it all, is loosening from the fixation onto form. Because the mind then becomes defined, and the mind is, is one with God, it's undefined. God is certainly not defined, and neither is Christ, so whenever the mind tries to rivet on a form, uh, then you could see in this movie she, she had first a lot of concern about dying on a particular day, and then she was kind of loosening up to it, and then ultimately, I think that when she said, Jack was right, I died, but it was the part of me that, that never lived, that died. You know, it was more of a, a, a tweak, it was a, a change of mind in the, in the purpose. So that's like the key, key thing. To not try to have specific goals and think you need to have them for happiness. Because they really aren't happiness, they're, they're just a defense against happiness. They're a defense against abstraction. That was a key point for me when I saw that movie. And then the famous Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones song, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. That's, that's such a classic and everyone can sing that because that's, that's kind of an experience on planet Earth. But the word get is the key word. Because if the mind's trying to get, then it won't know contentment or satisfaction, it has to give is to get out of the getting mode altogether and get into the giving mode. So, that's good too, in that sense. But for her, that was a big step when she loosened up and seemed to just sing it on air without awareness of what was really going on. That's kind of like a miracle. You, you have to dive into it and you can't control it or figure it out. Just give way to it, surrender. 
she, she used to, that was a big part of her, her journey. The song goes through my mind, it's kind of the Pali Mori song. <laughs> <laughs> and the eagle flies with the dove. And if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. Do 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 <laughs> you know, keep your eye on the prize, like the pest the form. When you're down and confused, and you don't remember who you're talking to. <laughs> Concentration, slip away. Cause your baby is so far away. And that's the lead into it, to the love you're one you're with. You know, that's one of the verses. But it's the, it's that idea of having a mindset and then getting riveted in the mindset and then Forgetting the point. Yeah, that's a good one. Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom of Steely Dan. Mm Yeah, it's like those two motives in the mind don't, don't even have a meaning point, the getting and the giving. So, that's why those, those chapters in the Course on Special Relationships, at one point, he says that when, when two people invite the Holy Spirit into their relationship, they are appalled. Appalled, because the, the invitation to the Holy Spirit invites a purpose, a new purpose into the relationship and not a purpose for which the ego set the whole world in the relationship. Because the ego set 
the purpose for all relationships to get. Then they invite the Holy Spirit into the relationship and they are appalled. And then Jesus says, there's only one way really to resolve it, and it's the you have to change the structure of the relationship to fit the new purpose. You have to change the structure of the relationship to fit the Holy Spirit's purpose. And that's appalling to the ego. That's not why it made relationships. That's not why it made the body. That's not why it made the world. The body and the world was made in hate. And this new purpose is to forgive and open to love. So it it's, uh, has nothing to do with the old purpose. So. That's really what, yeah, what both these movies were. The movie last night from wanting something and wanting to get something to true connection and true giving and true extending and the same, yeah, with the relationship in this movie was the same. The ego wanted to get something, so at the beginning it's just it was very annoyed. It was an annoying relationship, one based on frustrations and not getting what it wanted, and then yeah, it flipped around there. Anybody see anything in the movie? Is it related to your experiences? I saw something when um, it was one of the beginning scenes when she was in bed. It was like her hair was white. Everything was white. And what came into my mind was like a self-concept of purity rather than an actual experience of purity. That really just popped out for me. Mm. Yeah, it's striking. Mm. I was in... I cried a lot the first time I saw this movie. He kept having to pause it and cry, and just because in that moment I I, I felt very much a, like not even the act of dying of the life that wasn't being lived, but just I wasn't even there in that dying yet, and that was painful because I could just feel the purpose of the movie. And this time watching it, it just felt very joyful because I feel like begun truly dying to what never got to live, like, that it's going, like, so I, I just felt a lot more joyful watching it, you know, and, and just with the experiences the last few days, just more open to whatever is coming or given, or, and also the surrender, like, to the script being written apart, you know, I'm not trying to control the form. Yeah, I do remember the point in the movie, pretty early on, she's talking and saying, I have, I have the perfect life. And then she defined it right. after that. Reminded me, it harks back to the classic movie we have, Family Man, mm. where mm -hmm. Nicholas Cage is like, my life is perfect. He's telling Don Shadell, who of course is the angel, Don Shadell was like, oh, this is going to be so good. <laughs> it was almost like a setup for a spike. The angels to spike his perceived 
perfect life, you know. He's managing all this money, singing opera, and he's 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 in the the so-called life of the ego and the life of the world, like that old Frank Sinatra song, you know about got the world on the string, sitting on a rainbow, got the string around my finger. What a world! What a life! I'm in love. But when you when there's a controlling aspect of got the world on a string. Um, she felt she had the world on a string. Great job, great body, great partner. You know, she was rattling it off, all of her definitions of what the perfect life was. So it was a little bit like Family Man, except we didn't have an angel there going, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> there was a prophet. Yeah, the prophet. And the prophet, you know, put the prophecy in and and then she reacted to the prophecy. But that's no different than the reaction of the ego to the scriptures written. I was talking about the scriptures written on my interview today. And I, the way I refer to it is Slumdog Millionaire where the whole movie is, is for him to have the right answer, the final answer in the game show, he, he literally watched it play out and all the answers for everything that he needed was in his life experiences. And seemingly hitting the jackpot and winning this thing and, and falling in love and all the different things, you know, hinged on on acceptance, that it is written, that's the way it's spoken in that movie. It is written. Amazing Indian movie to, sh to go after such a deep, profound idea. That's another one of our classics. What movie is that? Slumdog Millionaire. Mm. Oh, no. That one's the best. I clapped in theater, <laughs> <laughs> and the, and then everyone clapped. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was that boom, that that impactful. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Lisa today, and I was like, well, and, and Michael, if I said if if an, another great movie never comes out of the theater, we're we're stocked. <laughs> we're stocked. Yeah, you keep pulling them out. <laughs> Sun chaser. Yeah. Ah. We've got them. They're, it's all under our nose. It's all right there for us. You know? This is like our food storage. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. set forever. <laughs> yeah. Forever. Seeds yeah. of all, all we need is <laughs> We are set. <laughs> Andy's actually splicing your talk into that movie, The Sun Chasers. Huh? Oh. So that'll be good. So you get to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the splicing in as if you were here. Yay. Because <laughs> Kristen didn't see it. Mm. I was happy too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, spirits teleporting. So I was talking to Anne today about that whole thing. That that would be an interesting. I think it's it airs on Saturday, Saturday. morning, yeah. It was deep. It was mm. just a deep interview, so you may enjoy that. She's always very very sincere and yeah, it's always like a, a meeting in the mind coming together with her. So that's why yeah. I think this is the third time we've done it. So yeah. for British accents, like a J female James Bond, except <laughs> she's not going to assassinate somebody. She's, <laughs> she's going to find eternal life, and we come together. Get into it's not a license to kill, a license to awaken. A license to awaken. <laughs> That's it. Da -da 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 yeah, they go, come at it and, and it's very, very fun that way. She had the PDF and the book of uh, Quantum Forgiveness, so yeah. So yeah, we do go, each time we meet, we do go deeper. It's like Krishnamurti and David Bohm. Going in there, <laughs> down into the awakening. Mm -hmm. 
That was a nice series too. <laughs> Because it's deep when you get into looking at hypotheticals and seeing the whole world as a hypothetical, then that's, you know, that's a release. Yeah, right before I went on, I, I, Lisa Cairns had posted a, a clip, I think I'd seen it before, but it was, yeah, it was about time-space being one construct. And Jesus says that in the Course, that it's, it's just two forms of the same error. And time and space aren't really different. Einstein spoke of them together as time space. And they're both relative. They aren't they aren't absolute. But most human beings think of time as absolute. So if you went around the world and you interviewed seven billion people and you would say, Is time absolute. Is space absolute? Like time, you could say, well, is time the same for everyone? And most people would say yes, but Einstein proved that the answer is no. Hmm. He proved it mathematically that every, everyone's experience of time is different. And, and, and also the time and space are the same, so that means everyone's experience of space is different. And it really coincides with over seven decades ago with the discovery of quantum physics. But it's that it's it's all subjective. Because it's lesson number two from the course that I've given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. It's the ego is entirely subjective and time space are entirely subjective and but people, that, that seems to violate common sense. For most people, if you ask them, like if you had a watch and you had <coughs> people standing in all the different countries, is one second in Russia the same as one second in America, the same as one second in Canada, the same as one second on the North Pole, the same as one second on the South Pole? People generally would say, well, yeah, a second is a second. It's not like there's a Russian second or Spanish second, but we do know, like when you go to South America and you can start to feel that the perception of time is different, like in Switzerland as opposed to Colombia. <laughs> There's a different perception of time, but then when they go and they take atomic watches, which are the, mo the most accurate watches in the world, when they take them on flights and jets and supersonic jets, so they have a watch on the ground, and they have a watch moving around, flying around in a supersonic jet. And then they bring the two watches together. They don't match. They don't match. A second is not a second. An hour is not an hour. A year is not a year. Their time is influenced by gravity. What's that movie with Matthew Mahoney? Interstellar. Interstellar, yeah. That, yeah. That's probably the most drastic demonstration of how time is so different when they go mm. way off. And they kind of miss, miss a few things and then they're meeting with their partner and <laughs> it's, it's years. A <laughs> few seconds off, years depending on the, the gravity. So it's just, all those things are just fantastic because it's just pointing to how subjective time-space is. It's, it's not absolute. It goes against all of our, even our romantic songs. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply as time goes by. No, no, that's not true either. You must know the songs, but it's giving yourself over to okay. 
I'm, if, if who I am is not relative, then it's worth going for. Who I am is absolute, but time-space is not. That's the, that's the distinction. That's the distinction that atonement makes. It's a distinction of identity. You just imagine people go out, two go out on a first date, they're sitting there at the dinner table, they're eating candlelight dinner. So what do you do for a living? I am abstract reality. <laughs> That's that'd be a good movie. <laughs> Why do I find it hard to write the next line? Oh, I want the truth to be said. <coughs> so it's a great adventure, yeah. It's almost just saying to the Holy Spirit, convince me, show me the <coughs> The world is relative, time-space is relative, and that I am not that. It's really clear. Because it's the frustration of, of wanting something specific to be everlasting. That's the frustration. Trying to it's something that's ephemeral or relative to be absolute. This mind is in a state of sleep, it's yearning for that eternal quality. It's, it's yearning for meaning, it's yearning for continuity. That's the heartbreak of the world. It's, it's the mind is asleep and dreaming and searching for continuity in the form. There is none. So ultimately it must wake up first to the quantum field, unified field, and then beyond that is abstraction. So all of these movies are practical, and that's the purpose behind them all. And was asking, you know, how did you, how did you find this purpose or tune into this? How did you start to see movies in such a radically different way? And so, well, it's the higher self or the intuition that's, that's guiding the way. one reach that state of observer or witness, but in practically speaking, how, 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 and it's, it's, well, I said just to be open, to be 100% intuitive. And what does that mean? That just means don't react or respond to the images. living in your heart, living in your core, living in your intuition, your higher self. And she mentioned in a new movie, it was at the theaters, was the one Sarah, about the priest and the... Spotlight. Spotlight. 
that child abuse within the Catholic Church in Boston. Yeah, it's just come out in the theater. So she said mm. she saw that and she had a lot of intense mm. emotions come up. So, But we had kind of laid the framework for movie watching and the purpose. So, yeah. so that's another mind watcher that's out mm. at, the, at the theaters. Good mind watcher. It's like I went to see the Passion of the Christ. There's a lot of blood flying around in that one too. That's the Mel Gibson one. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing that with a friend of mine and with my biological mother, who's Christian. And yeah, you know, it's just certain times and at the end with the. The whips and the the blood flying and the, and just blood just splattering all over there and I was, she was sitting next to me <laughs> I could hear her just <laughs> gasping because <laughs> of the interpretations of the blood be, it would be like having a, a a deep love for a figure and then watching that figure whipped. But repeatedly over and over. And that was one of the things I liked about the Rancher book, which gave like a, a, uh, like a fuller picture of things. But there was one point where um, Jesus was in a room and he was about to be really, from the world's perception, really beaten and whipped. And, and John, one of his apostles, had, had kind of, was in stealth mode, he kind of following along, had got into the room, and so it, he, Jesus knew he was about really, to, the body was about really to be whipped and whipped. So in the Urantia book, it says, Jesus just turned in the crowd over there, looked right at John, just nodded like, you can go now, <laughs> like, you don't belong in this room. <laughs> There's a great gesture of, of love and Mercy and graciousness, that knowing where John's you know, mind was, and, and saying, you don't need to see this. This is not something you need to witness. You can go now, you won't be able to handle this. Mm -hmm. Jesus graciously was very giving, he knew what was helpful. This is some great moments in the Arantia book, you know, it just captures those loving instincts. Very beautiful. Okay, that was a nice little evening. That was very, very nice. Those two movies back to back. This is a little softer, not quite so. <laughs> but if you're supposed to catch a bullet. They're going to catch a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Good night. She was like a tough egg. Mm -hmm. She was. She wasn't even a, a, a tough nut. She was like a tough egg. <laughs> <laughs> like a really tough egg. Easy to crack an egg. Like a little more effort than a normal yeah. egg. Yeah.
That's a good, good analogy. Yeah, harder to feel. <laughs> 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 They weren't just completely thrust together from never having been together. They, it was there was a friction of a history the spirit could unwind. Yeah. Friend was talking to her and said that she had slept with Pete, and yeah, she was slightly bothered by it. There was there was a meaning there that spirit could work with, but. That's this is the attraction repulsion dynamics going on there, whereas. With our two meeting in uh, the movie last night, it was a repulsion, repulsion <laughs> <laughs> dynamic <laughs> going right. on. <laughs> and then there was Russ together, which is always very fast when you have a repulsion, repulsion, and you throw them together. <laughs> yeah, that's a quick crack and peel. I just love the way these movies just reinforce that all things work together for good and there are no exceptions. Mm -hmm. Let all things be exactly as they are. You know? Both movies, including this one, like The Prophet, did his piece perfectly, you know, because that was a catalyst for her to start looking at things and questioning things even with a partner and this beautiful life and then questioning the, the big interview at New York. But she still needed to say yes. Like the breadcrumbs are given by the spirit, but she still needs. She could have easily gone up that elevator, you know, mm -hmm. to the to the boss, but she decided not to, and you know all those things. You just see how much happier she was just following her heart. Thing, just to get it was back to the guy would, and, she would learn that at that interview. That was like yeah, like her fine, like her break. She was. It's like what would you like to? It's like she was interviewing herself. Yeah, it's yeah. like she was like looking at her life, and it's like. It was like teach what you would learn, and that was like, oh yeah, that's definitely. It's almost like for her to get very clear, mm, and then yeah. it's like that, that sold it, and then it's kind of like. Yeah, she had to leave the cards yeah. behind. And yeah. Let the spirit prompt the questions. Yeah. Mm. And even that, that it's like, and it's like she at that point it was no longer about like keeping the career or anything. It was like she just couldn't ask like another fake question it's like it was for her it's mm -hmm. for her it's like like almost like the value of her life just got stronger and stronger like i need it's like it was it's like i need to it's like i need to know these answers like i need this it's like i and then it's like yeah she seemingly still got the job but it was like that's that's that yeah that. and when she followed her heart you know, asking the question that she wanted it was just like the worst thing you could possibly do you're gonna get fired but it's completely opposite, yeah. you know, like she's, mm. it's the best thing she could possibly do. It's the same with the strike, when she yeah. put her face down and yeah. in the mask and really just came authentically here and there. She, had a bit of, she was a bit juiced up. It was just like, <laughs> just, just following her, just letting Yeah, she was surprised then that she got the job. Everybody then. Yeah, but everything was everything flipped around and reversed. It's very cool. Yeah. And so when she followed her heart, then leaving New York and going with that guy to Seattle, it just, just seemed like a happy dream to me, you know, she was just there, just in a joy. And everything is forgiven because then she's there at the baseball game watching her yeah. ex and very happy for him. You know, yeah, great, yeah. This is great. Yeah. So everything's forgiven. You know, it's just like that. Mm -hmm. and so mm. All is forgiven. And just, yeah. Otherwise, she'd be in New York, you know, mm. all dressed up and just, you know, mm. a fake smile and mm. yeah. death. <laughs> death. Yeah. Death. 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 Death.
<laughs> yeah, it's the juxtaposition of what do you want? Here's your, here's your choice. Yeah. And I like the contrast of the two movies because the same thing happens just in doing this sort of concept. And you know, just like the hard boiled league, it wasn't a hard nut to crash, crack, but that's all it is. I mean, how much do you need to be whacked over the head? You know, how much do you want to suffer? It's just mm -hmm. the more we can just say yes as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> the easy, but the more joyful it can be instead of suffering, you know. Why do that? Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, we're getting into this, the, the different ways to crack open. Of course, the Spanish and the Mexicans have the piñata. They go, <laughs> and you keep whacking, you take a turn at cracking and whacking the piñata, and then the, the goodies, the candy comes out after it's cracked wide open. So that's, even that little party is a part of it all, cracking wide open. David, did you see on Facebook there was a little video of a small child, maybe about mm -hmm. two or three, whacking a piñata, but it was in the shape of Spider-Man. And then he just puts the bat down, he couldn't do it, and he oh puts his arms goodness. around oh. it. Yeah. It's the same height as him, he yeah. just couldn't do it. He didn't even hit it at all. He, he just, just was like... trying, but he just couldn't, his heart just was, and he just, <laughs> he just was so beautiful. I love, I love he just it. Bring all the traditions. Yeah, I love the thing that I saw for myself mess it up. It's like just in different instances, like you know, sometimes she still got the guy even though like it's in like I don't know. Like it almost could have seemed like she did something wrong during the surprise, you know, like going with it, you know. I don't know, just in different instances I've seen that. But it all worked out for good. Like and there would you know end up happening. I felt huge for me. Or that, um, yeah, just when she was asked to go upstairs in the elevator and she said, like, I'm going home. For me, like, I heard, like, I'm going, you know, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Letting go of the world. Right. Yeah. Don't know that. Yeah. Uh, or is, there's even that thing at the end, though, it might be a little stretched. That's where I heard it, like, when she was saying, because like someday it might be your last or something, and it was just like, yeah, like no more days, no more time. Like, thank God. <laughs> yeah. No more of that. Yeah, really, really love that. Very well done. Okay, another great movie night. <laughs>